I'd like to welcome you to this Q&A and say that it's a blessing to be with you. This week I want to talk about the blood moons. So this is very popular today. We're seeing these blood moons now. We're going to see these through 2015. Where the question is, do these blood moons have prophetic value within our Father's Word? Well, before I answer that, I want to read a few passages here. The first one is from our Savior in Luke 21, uh, verses 25 through 27. This is part of Yahshua's Olivet Prophecy. We also find this prophecy in Matthew 24 and also Mark 13. You know, this is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, single prophetic passage we find within the Word. Where here's what he says. He says, And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon, and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring men's hearts, failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man, coming in a cloud with power and great glory. So we find here a prophetic passage from our Savior saying, confirming here, that we will see signs in the sun, moon, and even stars as we see within this passage. So the concept of these blood moons having some sort of prophetic or biblical value is not far-fetched. As we find from our Savior, Yahshua said that we will see signs again in the heavens, including with the moon. We're in a Joel, <clears throat> Chapter 2, verse 30, we find another prophecy again referring to the moon. And it says, And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Now listen to this. It says here, The, moon, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. There before the great and the terrible day of Yahweh come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of Yahweh shall be delivered. Uh, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as Yahweh hath said, and in the remnant whom Yahweh shall call. So we find here very specifically that the word does state prophetically that we will see blood moons, or the blood shall turn to, or the moon shall turn to blood in the latter days. Where well, I think you know we're seeing many of these, and, and to say that these again moon bloods or blood moons that we're seeing are prophetic is not. Uh, contrary or in opposition to what we find in Scripture. Matter of fact, uh, on a side note, we find the same prophecy in Acts chapter 2, 17 through 21, also in reference to the latter days and Yahshua's coming. So we know that near the time of our Savior's coming, that we're going to see these signs in the heavens, including the sun, moon, and stars, as we find prophetically. Now in Revelation chapter 6, we find a reference to the uh, seals we in Revelation. Revelation 6, 12 through 15, it says, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, so this is the last seal we find in this chapter, it says, And lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of here, and the moon became as blood. So we find another reference here to the moon becoming as blood. It says, And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casts her unripe or untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And we know that they, they said, Fall on us, because they were in fear for the coming of Yahshua the Messiah. And we see that at this time, that we're going to see again signs in heaven at the time of, of Yahshua's coming and near his coming. That the the uh, sun will turn to darkness and the moon shall turn to blood. So, you know, do I believe and do we believe here at this ministry that these blood moons have prophetic value? Yes, we do. We believe that these blood moons more than likely have prophetic value. Now, we don't know what that prophecy is or what these uh, prophecies or these blood moons or signs in the heavens exactly point to, but we do believe again that they do have some sort of prophetic value. You know, in the last uh, several hundred years, the last 500 years or so, we've only seen three other occurrences of these blood moons. And one was during the Spanish Inquisition, which took place in 1942, and exactly the blood moons at that time took place on Passover Tabernacles, Passover Tabernacles, uh, April 2nd, 1493, uh, September 25th, 1493, March 22nd, 19, uh, 1494, and then September 15th, 1994. We saw similar occurrences in 1949, right near the uh, War of Independence with Israel, when Israel became a state, its own foreign nation in 1948. And we also saw the same thing in 1967-68, near the time of the Six-Day War, which took place in 1967. So, you know, we find historically that these blood moons have always occurred sometime near a significant event 
with specifically the nation of Israel. Again, the Jews were expelled from Spain during the Spanish Inquisition, and we all know that the War of Independence, again, Israel gained status as an independent state and also the war, Six Day War, that they defeated those nations and maintained their status as a independent foreign country. Now, we're going to see some blood moons. We've already seen one. It was actually April 15th. I was able to see that here in mid-Missouri. It was a wonderful sight, and I, again, I do believe it's important and significant that we saw that. October 8th, 2014, which will be right before the start of this year's Feast of Tabernacles. And the last two will be in 2015, April 4th, which will be Passover, as we uh, understand and, and are uh, looking at today. And then the September 28th, which will be uh, right before, again, the Feast of Tabernacles next year in the fall. So I do believe, and we do believe here at this ministry, that these blood moons do have value. Again, we don't know exactly what that significance is at this point. But, you know, Scripture says to watch as uh, the, the tree begins to put forth leaves. We know the summer is nigh. He says, as we see these signs occurring, we know that Yahshua is nearing or coming is near. So let us watch. Let us look at these prophetic signs, including signs in the heavens. But, you know, the most important thing is that we make sure that our lives are right with our Father in heaven. As we saw in Joel chapter 2, those who call on the name of Yahweh shall be saved. So we need to call and recognize the name of our Father in heaven, Yahweh and His Son, Yahshua the Messiah. And as we find in Revelation 22, 17, 14, 12, and 22, 14, that we are to have faith in our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, and obey and keep the commandments of our Father in heaven. And if we do these things, listen, we will be saved when Yahshua the Messiah comes back. So again, do we believe that these blood moons have prophetic meaning? Absolutely. We don't know what it is yet. But the key is that we're to watch and be ready when Yahshua comes. Well, I pray that this word has been a blessing to you. I pray that you would join me for every Q&A. And until then, may Yahweh bless you. Bye-bye.